Okay. Let's jump into the world of hibernation. Yeah. Um, take it away. So, hello everyone. Um, I'm Johan Rodier. I work at Red Hat as part of the Hibernate team, uh, and I work, work in particular on Hibernate search. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is not really search itself, it's more how to integrate search into an application. And uh, more specifically, uh, it's about integrating search into an application using Java 8 and above, using the Hibernate ORM uh, to store data in a relational database. Uh, it could be any framework, Spring Boot, uh, Jakarta EE, whatever really. So it's really about adding search to a business application um, that you might find in a lot of uh, shops today. Um, an application that uses the ORM to create, update, and retrieve data from the relational database. What we want to add is some way to query this data uh, in a full text way. Not just uh, scalar comparisons, but really um, more fuzzy search and more, um, more uh, precise, more, yeah, more textual search. So one way to do that when your data is in your database would be to uh, use Elasticsearch this, uh, just next to your database. But then uh, you have a problem. You would need to store your data both in the database and Elasticsearch. Every time you write to the database, you would need to write to Elasticsearch too. So ideally, you would like some kind of automatic synchronization, some, kind, uh, some tool that would allow you to not really care about synchronizing the two sources of truth, but really have it done behind the scenes. The question then becomes how to trigger the synchronization and how to map the relational world to the document world. <coughs> Uh, in the relational world, you may have data which is spread out over several tables, whereas in the document world, you would want to have as much as possible in a single document to minimize the need to do joins, and ideally to not do joins at all. The solution then, the one I, I'm proposing, is Hibernate Search, which is a library uh, which integrates into Hibernate ORM. So it's two dependencies. Uh, if you want to uh, map ORM entities to Elasticsearch, you have to add a mapper which turns uh, Hibernate ORM entities into documents and the backend which will index those documents and allow you to query the, the Elasticsearch cluster. Um, the configuration first. The configuration option, the properties, will uh, have to go wherever you would configure Hibernate ORM. It could be a persistent.xml, Hibernate.properties, <laughs> or if you're familiar with uh, Spring, it could be in the application.yml or application.properties. Wherever you push settings to Hibernate ORM, you can push settings to Hibernate Search. So in Search first, you'll define a backend, you'll give it a name. Here it's backend one. You say your backend will be the default backend for all your entities. Then you say that your backend type is Elasticsearch. We support Elasticsearch, but also uh, embedded Lucene mode. So you have to choose something. Then, of course, you have to tell us where to find your Elasticsearch cluster. And optionally, if you have authentication enabled, how to uh, authenticate. Once this is done, you still have to tell us, to tell Hibernate Search how to map the Java entity to an Elasticsearch document. So here on the left, you have the model for Java entity, a JPA annotated entity. On the right, you have the Elasticsearch mapping. In this state, 
there's nothing to map the two documents. In Hibernate Search, if you had this annotation, then automatically Hibernate Search will know that you map the book entity to a book uh, index on the Elasticsearch side. If you only add that, though, well, the document will be empty because we don't know what to put in the document yet. So you add other annotations. Here we have a title field. We say that this title field is a full text field analyzed with the clean text analyzer. And automatically, Hyman Search uh, is able to translate that into a Elasticsearch mapping where you have this. And of course, you add new fields as necessary, potentially on different properties, potentially on the same property. If you need to do different things with, with the same data, like searching on the title, but also sorting on the title. If you sort on the title, you don't want to use an analyzer that will break down your uh, title in multiple words, because sorting on multiple tokens is not really something you want to do. So you will create a different field for the same data. And Hyman Search will just push the same data to both fields. Uh, I talked br briefly about an analyzer. So the last part of the configuration would be to define these analyzers, which, has, which are, after all, the core of what you do when you do full text search. So you could do that directly in the Elasticsearch server, but since it's a, such a common need, there are APIs in Hyman Search to do that too. You would implement an interface. Uh, you would create an analysis configurer and you would reference it in your uh, configuration. Here I'm using Spring, so I annotate it with add component and I reference the component name. But you could do that using reflection without any, um, any uh, framework and just put the fully qualified class name. Now, this uh, configurer is not very useful. It doesn't do anything. What you will do is just use a DSL to create the analyzer and tell us which tokenizer you want to use, which char filter, token filters, and so on. <coughs> and we're all set. Once we've done this, Hyman Search can work. So this code, which is usually uh, used to persist entities with Hibernate or M, can be adapted to also work with uh, Elasticsearch to also, when you persist the entity, you will also index it. And to adapt it, you will do this, nothing. Because it's all automatic, it's all behind the scenes. So as soon as you do changes to an entity, you commit a transaction. Hyman Search will, uh, after the, trans the commit of the transaction, send everything to Elasticsearch. And of course, it also works for updates and deletes, not just for uh, ads, like I'm showing here. How it works? is that when your application sends, uh, asks the ORM to perform entity changes, the ORM will send insert and uh, updates to the database, but it will also uh, publish change events, which are uh, captured by having it search. And then when the ORM will uh, commit the transaction, there's a commit event, which having search will also capture. And when the commit event happens, then Hibernate Search sends everything to Elasticsearch. There are a few features that make it uh, a bit uh, less naive, uh, like automatic bulking of search requests. We don't want to send one request at a time for each document you index. We actually want to put it all in a single request to minimize latency and to uh, optimize uh, the flow of information between our application and Elasticsearch. So that was nice. You don't have to do anything once it's configured. But the example I gave is really uh, simple, too simple, actually. Uh, in the real world, you don't want to map one entity to one document. You really want to map a tree of entities to a document. You want to denormalize your schema and to include uh, for example, if you have a book entity with a few chapters, 
when you search on the book, you would want to search also on the content of the chapters. That's what really is interesting when you map your, your database data to an Elasticsearch uh, model. So in order to do this, oh, Hibernate Search also offers a, a feature. Here we have a book entity, a chapter entity, and here is the Elasticsearch uh, schema for the book. So you have a list of chapters here. You want to embed these chapters into your book document. You will just add an annotation to tell that. And Hibernate Search will be able to add a chapter's object, uh, a chapter's list of objects in your schema. Now, as before, the chapters are initially empty because you didn't tell Hibernate Search what to put to, uh, to index from your chapters. So you also need to add annotations on your field in your chapter to tell us what you want to index really and how to index it. Once you've done that, then everything is indexed as part of the, uh, of the book. And um, there are several options, actually. You can do more complicated things. Imagine your chapters are not only referenced from your book, but also from another table of contents entity. In your table of content index, you need the page count, but not in your book. You will be able to tell us when I embed the chapters in the book, I only want the title and the text, not the page count. I don't care about that. There are several options. Uh, you can also use nested storage to, ne to uh, not just put the data as is in the document, but really uh, ask Elasticsearch to store the chapters as nested documents so that the structure is preserved and you keep the information about which title is for which text which can be useful when you, <coughs> sorry, when you combine uh, queries. You do a, queries, uh, a query on both the title and the, and the content of a chapter, for example. Um, like uh, I want a title, uh, a chapter with uh, John in the title and uh, Smith in the content. Uh, you need to preserve the structure to be able to do that kind of queries. Otherwise, you will get a book which as in chapter one, John in the title, and in chapter two, two, Smith in the content. And that's not exactly what we want. So there are many options here, and you can really customize how you map your, um, your book to a document. Once again, uh, reindexing is, uh, is automatic. Now, if you have a piece of code that changes the chapter, where the book is never, never involved, uh, Hyman Search will know that when a chapter changes, you need to reindex the corresponding book, and it will do that. You don't need to tell us to do that, we know it. That was nice. Uh, we are able to index everything in, in uh, Elasticsearch, but then you index to search at some point. So you need search APIs. And there's also that in uh, Hibernate Search. You can, of course, just use the native uh, Elasticsearch APIs. You can craft your JSON uh, queries, send them to Elasticsearch, receive JSON responses, pass that, and uh, do whatever you want in your application. But it's also nice to have a Java TypeSafe API. So that's what we, uh, we offer here by uh, taking the user input and the entity manager, which is the entry point to the Hyminate or M API, you can extract the Hyminate search API. So you create a full text entity manager. From there, you can create a query. You will, you will say, I want to search on the book class and I want to create a, query, a search query. Then you, you will say, I want the results as entities. And that's where it gets interesting. You'll uh, give a few uh, a predicate or multiple predicates saying you want the title of the book to match the user input. And you build your query. And then 
when you execute your query, you will receive books, which are managed entities. Entities that are bound to the database. But you made the search in Elasticsearch. So you exploited Elasticsearch for the search uh, capabilities, but as to data and to, to retrieving data, it's, it, all, it all comes from the database. Uh, and as such, you can uh, exploit some, uh, you can benefit from some features from Hibernate ORM, like lazy loading. Uh, in your book, maybe not everything was loaded uh, right away, but uh, if at some point later in your code you, will, you access a getter of your book, the data can be loaded lazily uh, as needed. And you could also uh, use the book to uh, go make some changes and persist it, but that's not usually what you need here. So how it works is whenever Hibernate Search sends the, the query to Elasticsearch, it retrieves the hits, it retrieves the IDs of each document, and then it will ask ORM to retrieve the managed entities corresponding to these hit, hits and just return that to the user. Now, you may not want that. You may just want the data from Elasticsearch, and that's fine too. Uh, you can do projections, what is called projections, which is basically retrieving the data from Elasticsearch instead of uh, the database. And you can do, uh, there are lots of other features. You can do sorts. Each time you need to uh, tell us in your mapping what you want to do with each field. And then you'll be able, when you perform a query, to create a project projection. Using a DSL, you describe your projection. I want to project on the, on the title field, and I expect it as a string. You uh, use predicates. You can uh, define a sort too on the category field and then by score when the category is the same for two documents. You build your query and you retrieve the results as strings since you mentioned you wanted the title as a string. There are um, many other features. Uh, you have of course all all sorts of predicates. You can have uh, Boolean junctions that allow you to combine the predicates. You can do spatial, uh, spatial uh, predicates. You can uh, do more complex projections where you will project on multiple fields and combine them in a single bean that you will retrieve from your query. For example, if you want both the title and the score of the document, you can do that. You put them uh, in a pair and you just uh, retrieve that from your query. So there are a few features like that which are made to make your <coughs> life uh, simple. Uh, do we have, yeah, we do have a bit of time. Cool. So uh, a few details about the Elasticsearch integ integration. The schema I mentioned, uh, Hyman Search can push, can push it automatically to Elasticsearch for you. Uh, there are several strategies to manage the, uh, what is called the index lifecycle. You could do nothing. Uh, you tell Hyman Search, I want to manage the schema myself. I know what I, I'm doing. I'm putting lots of particular settings in the schema and uh, I don't want to, I don't want Hyman Search to mess, mess with that. That's possible can tell Hyman Search to create it, and if it already exists, just do nothing. You can ex uh, tell Hyman Search to expect it to exist and to validate it if it matches the configuration you have in your application. You can tell it to update automatically the schema, which is a bit more dangerous because uh, updates can fail. Uh, of course, if your data, if your mapping changed in, changed in a way that data needs to be re-indexed, uh, this kind of strategy will fail, but still it's useful uh, in develop development environments. Uh, these ones are also useful uh, for tests mainly. You can tell Hyman Search to just drop the current index, create a new one, and drop it when it shuts down. And of course, 
uh, I talked about on the fly indexing whenever you persist, persist your entities, but you might have an application with data already in the database and you want to index all of it so that uh, everything is available in uh, Elasticsearch. You can do that with uh, what is called the mass indexer, where you just tell us what entity to uh, re index and you tell it, to, tell it to do its work. Obviously, it's a, a heavy process, it will take uh, some time, so you will need to tune it if you want to, it to perform, uh, perform well. So you have several options to tune that, that process, which is, will spawn several threads, load the data from the database, and push it to Elasticsearch. And if you want to give it a try, Hibernate Search 6 is still in alpha, so there are some serious limitations still. You don't have all field types. Uh, there are some missing features. The APIs are still unstable, so we're getting closer. Um, but you can try it. Reports and contributions are welcome. Uh, there's a demo at this address. And if you want to use Hibernate Search in production, uh, you should rather have a look at Search 5 from now which has uh, different APIs and is focused on embedded Lucene mode. So it also has experimental support for Elasticsearch. But since the, API, uh, the APIs are optimized for Lucene, it's not the best fit. That's why we're doing a Hamilton Search 6. And that's all. Thank you. So that's a problem we don't tackle. The question was, how do you deal with an update-intensive uh, application where usually you would drop the index and re-index everything? Um, hot updates are not something we support right now, but we know we have to update it. We're thinking about solutions. Uh, but in order to do that, we first need to uh, implement some sort of synchronization between our nodes or how many search nodes. Currently, we just we don't synchronize between the nodes, and we need to add some uh, some sort of communication. Uh, we plan to do that, but that will probably will be for six not one uh, something. Yep. Um, so. The projection that you through <coughs> Ask for a projection is it the default, or do you have explicit, explicitly ask for the, the, the Elasticsearch document? So the question is, uh, is the projection uh, um, an Elasticsearch document or a Java object? Uh, it's a Java object. It's type safe. Actually, Hibernate Search does all the work to convert the data. Like if you have a local date field, uh, it's sent to Elasticsearch uh, as JSON, and it's also received as JSON. It will, it will be a string in the document. We will convert it back to a local date and give that to you. So is it also possible to, post, to uh, postpone having the entity behind the JSON document? So what you retrieve is a JSON document, you use it in your interface, and you, and you only go for the, uh, the, the entity the moment you need it. So can you use your JSON document to retrieve the entity? Um, sorry, you want to? So if you, if you ask for... Um, you is who? who? If, if the application asks for uh, an Elasticsearch document, yeah. you get it uh, from the API, and can you use these documents to go after um, an entity later, so ask for... Uh, there's the is question... There to, is there a reference to have the... Yes. So the question is, uh, if you if the application retrieves the Elasticsearch documents, uh, is Hyman Search able to use these documents later to retrieve the entities? Yes. Right. Uh, you can 
there's the information inside the document, yes, to, uh, there's enough information to retrieve the entity. We actually have a specific projection for that, which is uh, called a reference projection. You can just retrieve an object that represents your entity. Okay. And uh, it's, it's basically just the class and the ID, and then you can just use uh, the high minute or multi-load <coughs> operation to retrieve the entities. I'm afraid we're out of time, but I, I'm sure you can ask like in person afterwards. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Five minutes to speak. Um, okay. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone.